You're listening to the Nostalgia X Podcast with your boy DJ Doom and your boy j Bat. All right, what's up, what's up, Nostalgia X family and friends? It's your boy DJ Doom. What up, guys? With this is j Bat, Main man j Bat <laughs> in the building. <laughs> Episode 11. Is it really 11? 11, my boy. Dude, that's crazy. 11. So we we starting that next uh, group of ten, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Episodes <laughs> with this one being, you know, the next one. And um, of course, I just had my my birthday the other day. And um, happy birthday to you! <laughs> I'm part of that thirty thirty club now. Ooh, you feel me, uh-oh. dog? He's in don't my ask, he's in my club now. Don't ask me what that second thirty means. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, I'm in your neck of the woods now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now <laughs> here comes here comes the the crickety necks and the hurt backs and the hey. hurt limbs. Oh gosh, I don't I'm want none kidding. of that. I'm just kidding. Side effects may include anal leakage. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> no. didn't mean I, to do that. I don't want to be any of those. Uh, you know the, those little medication commercials where they're like side effects may include they try to throw them at you real quick oh yeah and sometimes they are really messed up stuff like you know you ever get medicine from like pharmacies and you read the side effects <laughs> have you ever done that not really I next just, time next I, time now i'm telling you it's now the next time when you get medicine you're gonna look at it <laughs> yeah now that i'm 30 it's like uh they start trying to sneak things past you like this guy's 30 he'll be all right Mm-hmm. So you know you're sitting at it's like the pharmacist tells you, and you're like, oh by the way this this medicine gives you drowsiness this and this yeah it okay. might make your eyes and then turn you're red and you're like geez that's a long list it may make your eyes turn red your <laughs> left butt cheek's gonna be a little numb <laughs> oh so you're my gonna gosh. be you're gonna be sitting to the right a little bit <laughs> <laughs> you sit down and see everybody's like why are you sitting like that might hit you with the Drax sensi- nipple sensitivity you might get a little bit of that. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. That was funny right there. <laughs> Aren't you wearing the check? I have sensitive nipples. <laughs> oh, my nipples hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got sensitive nipples. <laughs> That's your rocket impression? Yeah, that was my rocket Damn, impression. Damn, trash panda. <laughs> <laughs> Trash panda over here. <laughs> <laughs> I rewatched that movie recently, like at least the first thirty minutes. <laughs> I didn't realize the first two times I watched it that Rocket was trying to get the whole sarcasm thing down. Mm-hmm. So he kept winking when he meant the opposite. Yep. You know, hence sarcasm. But he was winking with the wrong eye so people can see him winking. <laughs> What's up was like, sure. You know, I got, yeah, uh huh. And they wink at the other person that's in on the joke. He was using the wrong eye to wink. They can the still whole, see you wink throughout <laughs> the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like, you, you don't catch stuff like that because when you first watch movies like that, they're like so epic and you've been waiting for them for a long time. Oh, yeah. You're just excited to be there and you miss some of the little things, you know, and that was one of the things I missed. <clears throat> I remember him yeah. winking and stuff. But I was just like, you know, like the joke was kind of like, oh, okay. It didn't hit me as well. It hit me this time. I oh, was yeah. like, bruh, so funny. I usually, whenever I watch movies, I always see the, um, some of the bloopers. Them, oh, the yeah. The inside bloopers on there. Yeah. That I know, miss some watching editors bloopers. don't see it. I miss watching bloopers. They used to do that. Like that was such <clears> a common <throat> thing in like the 90s growing up. Oh, yeah. Seeing bloopers for movies. And you just... I know they're still there. You might get them in like the extra features, bonus features on Blu-ray DVD, but they're just not as easy to get or see. Sometimes they would throw them at the end during the end credits. Like they should mm-hmm. go back to doing that occasionally. That'd be pretty cool if they did go back to doing that because that'd be worth staying at the end. Yeah, I'm I like, mean, I'm like, we get the end know, credit the, scenes, but I'm like, you got Marvel Studios leaving a big scene, a pivotal <laughs> scene at the end. Yeah, so I'd say it's great for like movies that aren't like that. Like obviously, I have we have our little inside joke where where tag with Jeremy Renner is Hawkeye's solo film. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a perfect film to throw. Yeah, you know uh, the bloopers at the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That'd be funny if he came through with his Hawkeye outfit. Oh on my one gosh! Of, obviously, they can't do that because licensing. But that yeah. would have been. It could be like he could do like a little hint or a little, yeah, just a little go throw into character. in. Like, right. Oh my 
That would be pretty funny. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That movie should be coming out on Blu-ray soon. And Infinity War? No. Uh, Tag? Tag? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because Infinity War just came out. I oh, need to go inf- grab it. Infinity War is coming out next week. Not this coming week, but next week. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Well, either way, it's it's about to drop if it hasn't, and um, Tag should be, because Tag obviously didn't do as well in the box office. Movies take longer to come out. Yeah. You know, when, when they do so fantastic. So that one, I want to say as a movie, it came out maybe like a month later. Mm-hmm. So it should be coming out around this time. Yeah. And I'm gonna get it. I don't care. I didn't. I didn't care if that movie was rated a 20 on Rotten Tomatoes. That's the Hawkeye solo film for me. Well, like for me, I mean, I don't. I don't look at reviews or anything else. I depict it on how I watch it. Yeah. The only movies. I mean, I do look at reviews, but I look at reviews uh, mainly for movies that I am so so about watching. Like yeah. I don't know if I want to see this, or I don't know anything about this. How is it doing? Yeah. Oh, it's doing well. Okay. Well, boom. Let me go watch it. If it's a movie I already know I'm going to watch, like Suicide Squad, yeah, I'm going to go watch it regardless of what the of reviews course. say. So I don't look at the reviews for that prior because I don't want ideas being put in my head like, yeah. oh, this movie isn't good yeah. according to most of the public. So the then you CG go in, was so bad you can actually see the other stuff that's on behind it. Yeah. Who cares? So then you go in and watch it and it's just like you got all these you know, this negative peer pressure. Like, right. Ooh, I just like enjoying the movie, which is how it used to be back in the day when there was an internet, yeah. and we would go see movies. Hell, half of the things, more than half of the movies I saw growing up, I had no idea what they were about going in. Yeah. And you get that feeling, like when you go to see an Infinity War for the first time, or Guardians for the first time, and you just, it's like being a little kid again. Yeah. Or Star Wars for the first time, like you're just like, oh my god, oh my god, what's that? Oh my god, what's that? And you're just getting mind blown like every few minutes. That's how I was growing up. But it's now called, the internet it's called a nerd messes gasm. it all up. Yeah. You get your nerdgasm right just from watching right. the movie. It's I mean, very hard to get everybody in. has their nerdgasm in their own way. <laughs> right. Because you know <clears throat> if you look at it, collectors will get nerdgasms just from when new collectibles come out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll even put it for women's instance. Some women that were like, Oh, did you hear about that new new book that's about to come out or uh, that new T V show? You know, they they're they're a nerd in their own way too as well. Yeah. Like shoes or clothes or and collectibles. Yeah, and collectibles. So if you look at it, everybody has their nerdgasm in their own way. And then for us, for instance, it's collectibles, movies, <laughs> comics. Yeah, <laughs> new shows. I mean, shows. everyone was complaining about Robin saying "f Batman." I was just like, yes. F Batman, <laughs> even though I love him. Yeah, I but the thing is, him. is like you, 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 you think about it as like, okay, which Robin is this? Yeah. So you're like, uh. I mean, if it's Damien, it makes complete sense. Uh, yeah. Because he treats his dad like trash all the if time. It's, if it's if if this is Damien, it's gonna be worth watching. Uh, yeah. Which bat? Which Robin <clears throat> do you not want it to be? Do, 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 do. Can't be Dick Grayson because he wasn't on the uh, yeah. Titans. Well, he kind of was, but he, he was he was the Nightwing on the last one, right? Where they mm-hmm. when the Titans versus Justice League, the animated movie, right? Yeah, right. but the Judas contract. Is that mm-hmm. the other one? He was Nightwing. <laughs> he was the Nightwing. Dick on Grayson that one was too. Nightwing. So he is still, he's kind of like a mentor, you know? Yep. Instructor, kind of. Um, I mean, I won't be surprised if it is Damien. Because a lot of people are like, oh, Bruce We Wayne. haven't gotten a live action Damien. No. This will be the first time ever just to get a live action Damien. Yeah. And because, that would totally fit in with, yeah. with that. Because when, be when, they, when they brought him in the comic book series... You're like, oh, wow, Bruce Wayne has a son by, you know, With Talia. Talia. And you're like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. And then you get a, uh animated movie with Batman versus Robin when Bruce Wayne finds out that Damien's his son. Right. And he takes him under his wing or yeah. attempts to. And he he's gives rebellious. Him the he's got a bad attitude. But he kicks major ass. Yes. I'm just because like, he was trained, oh he was trained, um, trained by the by League the... of Assassins, mm-hmm. which 
one of them was Deathstroke, correct? Yep. Like he was still operating under that. Mm-hmm. And um, doesn't that end up being like his rival? Doesn't that yes. end up becoming like his rival? Yes, which is an awesome rival. <laughs> it's I mean it would be an ep- it's an epic rival. Yeah, I mean you have Joker and Batman as a rival. Yeah, Deathstroke and Damian that's a huge rival. Yeah. Because yeah. apparently Deathstroke killed half of the League of Assassins, <laughs> yeah. so he can be the only one, right? So I mean, other Including than other Roz, than, right? Because that happened. Yeah, I don't want to ruin movies, but this movie kind of has been out for years. So yeah, it, apparently he did quote unquote end Roz, but you know Roz doesn't die. You're right. He can just someone just throw him in the Lazarus pit. Mm-hmm. And he'll be back. Which, mind you, uh, if y'all haven't seen the original Batman animated series, um, WB, mm-hmm. right? Uh, there is like the whole <clears throat> Raish Al Ghul origin story on there. It's cool. And the first time he shows the effects of the Lazarus Pit to Bruce, so savage, mm-hmm. bro. So savage. Comes out. Dripping, you know, what I'm saying, like, what's good? <laughs> just yeah, to, okay, what, okay, like ladies, just picture, just picture this, just picture this, just picture your favorite actor, <laughs> yeah. put actor, yeah, in a pool and then comes straight right out of the pool from the side, just pushing himself up and he's right. drenched. He's Women, drenched, just picture that, but he's ready to defend your honor because exactly. someone just pissed him off. Now, dudes, <laughs> picture the beautiful woman. It I'm, can be your wife, your girlfriend, we, or a we or can an go actress. To, we can go to that nineties, uh, that National Lampoon's vacation. Oh where he's, where yeah, he's picturing the girl popping out of the pool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boom, right there. Yeah, dudes, just picture that, and that's that's how kind that's of how the, epic that scene. Yeah, is. I was just like, God, man, they did that so well. Mm-hmm. Now we just need that in live action. But if this is Damien, that'll be that'll be so lit. Um, I mean, they can go different ways with it. I think the guy looks great as Robin. I'm very excited about the show. If Robin and Beast Boy are done right, that's already enough, you know, awesomeness. Like they can they can have a few missteps on a few characters, and the show still be worth watching. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, I'm excited about it. You know, your boy Jason Todd was thrown in the Lazarus pit. Right, that's how Red Hood came about. Yep, which is another one of my favorite animated films. DC really, I mean, they have a few that are kind of like, eh, but they're like up to date, not going back into the mm-hmm. past character animated films, and a few different ones like um, Gotham by Gaslight. Yep. It's really good, really good story, um, and um, what's that other one? The one where they team up with Harley Quinn. That one. I, oh, Batman and Harley Quinn. Right. That mm-hmm. one was good. Not kid friendly. <laughs> no. <laughs> Most of these are not kid friendly. No, not at so, all. So you know, Justice League Dark isn't even kid friendly. Right. Oh my gosh. Right. That's another one. I own that one. Very solid. Um, and there's a couple new ones coming out, but they're all really good. Just not kid friendly. So no. you know, me and J Bat both have children. As much as we would love them to watch these, eh, can't. yeah. Batman. Batman. Bad Blood is. The worst. <laughs> yes, yes. The title gives it all. Right. Bad blood. Okay, let's and, not and, put the kids there. <laughs> and even Batman versus Robin, you're like, okay, it's Batman versus Robin. This is interesting. Damien cusses up a storm. Damien cusses. Uh, there's murder. Oh, yeah. You know, like the first villain that they go and see. Mm-hmm. Like kids are getting murdered and mm-hmm. kidnapped and crazy stuff happening. Someone there may or may not get Killing murdered. Joke. Right. Killing joke. There's... Mm-hmm. A little mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if some of y'all people know what that is. Okay, mm-hmm. kudos to you. <laughs> There's some of that. In the words of Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. <laughs> I just watched Homecoming again for like the fifth or sixth time. Tenth. Maybe more. Yeah, I lost count. But um, our boy, Michael Keaton, man. This guy, fantastic man. I love Michael Keaton, man. He's I a, love him. He was the original. He was Batman. there for us when we were growing up. Nineteen eighty nine. He's, he's there for me again. Like this mm-hmm. man. Oh my god, I love him. Um, Played a good Beetlejuice. Yes, but he did fantastic. I mean, in every, really every role he's done, he does fantastic. Yes. Um, 
But uh, not only that, like the special effects for the vulture on that movie, Mm -hmm. freaking amazing. He looks so B.A. Like, I'm trying to think of a villain in the past few movies. Like, obviously Thanos looked lit, but like on a different level. Like, he just looked strong and powerful. Yeah. And he was a straight savage, taking everybody down. Oh, you do. You got Rhino. Right. Rhino. Well, we also had, uh, you haven't seen the last Deadpool, but Juggernaut. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But um, you got to go partially CG for Juggernaut, obviously. You he's have to. huge. Vulture, though. <sighs> My God, man. He, animated series, he's this old, look, like they, they did it right. Like Part of the original Sinister Six. Right. And they, you know, they, they took enough from the original character. Mm-hmm. And they brought it up to date, and they just did fantastic. And they picked uh, a freaking excellent. They casted a good actor for that. Fantastic, man. And just the movie, the way they set it up. There's a scene in Homecoming. Sorry if you haven't watched it. But um, basically, Peter Parker ends up, he has a crush on this girl the whole movie. Finds out towards the end of the movie when he's taking her to... I think homecoming dance or prom. Yeah, one of it was the two. homecoming. Yeah, he's taking her homecoming. That her father is the vulture, and he knows, but the vulture doesn't know that he's Spider Man. But um, father's like, I'm gonna drive y'all there for whatever reason. He's just like, I, I want to drive y'all there. Peter's like, you know, no, you don't have to, because he already knows who he is. Yeah, but obviously he's in a Spidey suit. Last time he saw Michael Keaton's character, mm-hmm. so he doesn't know. Through some questions that he asked him on the way there, he finds out. He found out quick, too. Yeah, he's a smart guy. And um, he tells his daughter to go on in. So it's just him and Peter Parker in the car, and he lets him know the deal. Like, I'm going to let you slide because you saved my daughter's life. But consider this us being even. It's like, you're going to stay out of my business and the th- things I'm doing, or... I'm going to end you. And I don't mean end your career as Spider-Man. I mean end your life. Yeah. And he also threatens his family. He said, I'll I'll kill you and everyone that you know and love. Yep. <laughs> Savage. Big time. Savage. Mm-hmm. What does Peter Parker do? At, at least at that very moment. Like I said, I'm not going to ruin the whole movie. But at least at that very moment, he takes his ass inside the homecoming. <laughs> yep. He's like, oh, Okay. I'm a little boy. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go dance with this g- 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 girl. <laughs> <laughs> Straight savage, man. But that movie is fantastic. Um, from there, I want to segue into a couple funny things. So, one, I told Jay about this earlier. I found out <laughs> that Michael Douglas, the original Ant Man mm-hmm. on Ant Man and Ant Man and Wasp, the one that gives Paul Rudd's character the suit. He's Hank Pym. <laughs> right, Hank Pym. He, <laughs> going into Ant-Man and Wasp, so the sequel that's still in theaters to Ant-Man, he had not him. watched, <laughs> he had not watched Civil War. Like, Michael Douglas as a person had not watched Civil War. So he had no idea what Ant-Man did in that movie whatsoever going into the sequel. So he goes, you know, into the script reading and all that stuff. Director's working with him. And he's confused as hell. Because he's like, why is Scott Lang... Ant Man's character on house arrest. What's going on? He doesn't know what the f is going on <laughs> with this movie, which that's actually a major key point in the plot for the sequel. Um, because obviously, Civil War once again another movie that's been out for a while. So sorry, spoilers. But uh, Civil War, there's obviously the big battle between mm. Captain America's team and what he stands for, and Iron Man's team, and what do they call it? Sokovia Accords, or whatever that they stand for. So Captain America's team's against, Iron Man's team is for. He feels that the um, metahumans, or whatever term you want to call them, superheroes, Should super be villains, they need to be registered, they need to be checked. They can't just go out and do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. There needs to be rules and regulations in place for them and laws. The government needs to own them. Essentially, that's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's why Cap's like, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that goes against everything. You know, all my freedoms are out the window just because I have these powers. And um, I'm not for that. 
I think there may still need to be rules in place, but he wants to find a common ground. No one, no one's with that. It's like yeah. yes or no. He doesn't want to be yes or no. He wants it to be maybe somewhere in the middle. So that's where the whole civil war is from. Anyway, um, Ant Man um, sided with Captain America. Anyone that sided with Captain America was seen as um, a rogue, breaking the law, yada yada. They got in trouble. Mm-hmm. So. Um, that's sort of the pretense to the uh, Ant Man and Wasp movie. So, not really spoiler alert. I think they showed in the previews, but Scott Lang is on house arrest at the beginning of Ant Man and Wasp. So Michael Douglas is like, I don't know what the hell's going on because he never watched Civil War. <laughs> that's completely out the window for him. I mean, you gotta you gotta give it to him. He has two kids. He's with you know, yeah, beautiful, beautiful wife. Yeah, but uh, I mean, he he's very busy. Yeah, you know he's. But you but know I mean, when when you when you when you're a major role, a major character, you got to know what's going on. Right, I agree. And you could just watch part of the movie. You don't even mm-hmm. have to watch the whole thing. Like he, he technically works for Disney, so Disney could even like splice some little twenty minute video clip together. Like, hey, you need to see these scenes out of this movie because they lead into what's going on here. Yeah. So naturally, after they found that out, he went and watched the movies, and then. Went back and everything was good, but I just thought that was hilarious that, you know, they're humans too and they don't necessarily just, oh, because I'm in this movie, I'm going to go watch this. Like they have regular lives and certain things may or may not happen that you expect to happen or assume happen. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. Um, On that same subject, Leslie Jones, you may know her from Saturday Night Live. Um, she's this in a lot of funny. comedy movies. This is so hilarious. I love but, this. Um, she was live tweeting herself watching Infinity War, and one specific scene has gotten a lot of love because um, of what happened after she posted it. But um, there's my favorite, arguably favorite scene from Infinity War, where uh, Captain America first shows his face, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Oh my God, that's my husband. <laughs> that's my man." <laughs> And he's got a beard. <laughs> She's just <laughs> raving all about Chris Evans. And it actually got retweeted by Chris Evans. And on top of it getting retweeted, he also commented that the actor that plays his vision verbatim says the same things about him every time he sees him on set. <laughs> <laughs> and then the actor that plays his vision posts a picture of himself as vision staring <laughs> off into the distance. And it's like, yeah, that's totally true. This is what I look like when I'm doing it. And... <laughs> I'm only human, or kind of. <laughs> yeah. So it's totally awesome. And uh, Leslie's hilarious. She actually um, does the live tweet reactions to Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. So the whole last season, she would sit down. Typically, they it got so popular that they started getting their actual actors and actresses from Game of Thrones to oh, sit wow. down with her. And she would watch it with them. And she's just loud, obnoxious, fun, just always cool about it. And she's a true fan. So it's like, it's not like she's just watching and being crazy. Like she's watching and she actually knows about the lore, the story, everything. And so (laughs) she's just going in about stuff and then the actors there with them. So they're just like having fun. And what better way to watch it than with someone that actually was a part of, you know, the crew that made it, uh, the cast. So um, seeing her react to Game of Thrones is is super hilarious. Oh, that's funny. Super hilarious. But um, yeah, check it out. It's on Twitter. You're, you can just go on uh, probably YouTube and stuff, and they have her reaction probably put on there. Or the Game of Thrones uh, compilation, because she's done tons of them. So someone's probably put them all in a video clip together so you can, you can laugh for a while. Hey, you do, know, you do know what you can do on Twitter, too, as well, right? Well. You can hit up our Twitter, man. Absolutely. I mean, you gotta you gotta see what we're posting. We got we're posting a lot of stuff. You know, a lot of a lot of good things happening. Speaking you know. of um, Hero Clicks, the game that we love and we play, um, we officially announced our team recently, Team NSX. Whoop, whoop. So shout out to our team. Um, and on top of that, we are also uh, working on a campaign right now, GoFundMe this month. I just started it a couple days mm-hmm. ago, and we've already hit over 50% to goal. We're trying to raise a total of $400 to get my buddy Felix Munoz from Puerto Rico over to the World Championship World Cup of Hero Clicks, 
that's happening in October. Oh, yeah. Um, we're just trying to get the flight for him, and everything else really is going to be covered for him once he gets here. So um, check it out, the GoFundMe. I did post it on Twitter and Instagram, but I'll mm-hmm. repost it uh, come, you know, the time this is this episode's published. But check it out. Uh, you can donations start at as little as $5.00. And I mean, every little bit helps. Yeah. If, if you can only spell f- spare five dollars, that gets us a step closer to getting Felix here. Mm-hmm. And we've already hit over fifty percent, like I said, in just a couple days. But you know, we want to keep things going. We want to get to that four hundred as quick as possible, so that way the prices don't go up on the plane ticket. Yep. Because the closer to the date you are, the higher the price of the ticket <coughs> is. So the sooner the better, and we can get him here. And he's representing Puerto Rico. Yeah. He's actually the uh, Puerto Rico province champion um for hero clicks so we definitely want him to be able to represent it's real mm-hmm. big so i mean just yeah you know as the hero clicks community we all support everybody and you know we try to you know give give everybody the respect you know not only as a team member but also as spectators so right this- anything any any donation does help out for this because you know we want to recognize everybody that you know that doesn't have that opportunity to come over to enjoy you know the big tournaments we want to help this one person out because if you haven't heard you know of course everybody's heard in the news about puerto rico getting hit really really hard we want to help them out last year yeah you know we want to help out this is our this is our way of extending our hand and everything else to you know given the love of how much we love you know puerto rico not only you know dj dunes puerto rican that's that's his you know live his his ethnicity, background. <laughs> his background, but you know we want to, we want to help support him, and you know, give a donation to this. For for the record, uh, he wasn't even planning to come. There's so many people that you know they do compete in states and province championships, and maybe they go in because they just want to play in a tournament. Mm-hmm. They're not expecting to win, um, but he's got some skills, and he ended up winning, and. You know, like, why not? Why not help his dream come true? Because I don't know. I'm not going to assume and say he's never been to the States. Uh, Obviously, Puerto Rico is part of the U.S., so Mm -hmm. you can travel. You can go and come and go as you please. But, um, you know, the it's it's not as easy as it sounds. You know what I'm saying? And after everything happened last year with the hurricanes, the island, you know, they we all came together and we're stronger than ever. But realistically, from a financial standpoint, some people having to wait on insurance mm-hmm. to come in and repair their homes or give them a new place to stay. Right. The island just being cleaned and with hurricanes and stuff, even if your stuff's okay, you might be able to drive down the road a few miles and everything's destroyed. Yep. Not to mention 100% of the island was out of power. Everybody was out yeah. of power when the hurricanes hit. And I've never seen something like that where... Uh, as a country, a hundred percent power outage like yeah. that is so bad. Um, I still remember when it happened, um, trying to contact whoever we could via internet, phone, whatever, um, just to make sure our family was okay. And I, it, it took about four or five days just to find out that everyone was okay, wow. and that is sad and hard um, because you you see the news and you're just like hearing horrible stuff you know right. the news when it's right. bad news they love giving you that but mm-hmm. when it's good news few and far between you know yeah so they make it seem worse and i'm just like oh my god i got a lot of family over there yep. most of my family's actually over there so this is big i know it's something small it's just a game that we that we have as a hobby that we love but it's it's something that i wanted to do i wanted to help make happen and um, shout out to H- Howard and Lucky Dice because yeah, he's man. actually um, helping me, helping me with this. He's helped share it, and there's a few other members of the Hero Clicks community yeah. that I'll definitely be showing a lot of love to once we get all this completed because they've been helping me share. They've been contacting me saying, "Hey, I want to post it on my blog and stuff like that." So uh, I'm I'm getting a lot of support and a few of the donators too. Um, that you know, we've had one donator donate a hundred dollars. Oh wow! Which is amazing. He's a big part of why we're where we're at. So, That's good. Uh, so yeah, we're we're almost there. We just got to keep on. And uh, I mean, I'm happy that we've already gotten this far in just uh, about forty eight hours. Yeah. So we're gonna keep pushing, and I'm sure hopefully in the next week or so we can get 
we can get that so we can go ahead and get this ticket taken care of. Keep it moving, Plane man. Plane ticket. Yeah. Keep it moving. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited, super stoked, and I'm glad to meet him in person and uh, show him around Alabama. I can't uh, wait to meet him. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Super fun. October's going to be big, man. Big. Not just <laughs> for, you know, the world championships happening, but also just, I think, as a community, it's mm-hmm. going to be big. Um, so, and we're looking to start our uh, video podcast oh, yeah. as well. So we will have audio and video. If you enjoy uh, getting us, you know, sort of radio style, audio podcast style, that's still going to keep going. But we're also going to have the video version um, via YouTube and other places too. Hey, you get to see how ugly I look now. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> um, one quick thing I wanted to hit on because uh, <clears throat> I mentioned Game of Thrones. Not Game of Thrones. <laughs> Guardians. Sorry, these G's are throwing me off. Uh, Guard. I'm 30. Okay. <laughs> Guardians That's of the, the Galaxy. Old age getting to you now. James Gunn. Oh, you know, man. I don't want to go too much into this because it is a touchy subject. Very touchy. But he basically let go by Disney. Correct. Yes. Um, and he uh, was main one of the main people behind both the Guardians movies. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how what that means for the next Guardian sequel. Obviously, things are going to be different. I keep hearing that it's going to be it's delayed right now. Yeah, so they got to find someone to replace him. Yeah, um, and it's hard to replace. Yeah, he he made some some comments apparently in his past, and it was it was found by somebody. Um, or someone at Disney, and it came to light. And um, I don't know how long ago it was. When I heard what it was, I was like, I don't even want to even look into it. Yeah. Because um, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, James Gunn no longer part of uh, the crew, no longer a member of the Disney Marvel Cinematic Universe team, whatever yeah. you want to call it. So that's, I hate, that's I, painful. I, I just hate just to hear about that because... I mean, I, I don't want to. Those get are two in, of my favorite movies. Well, I don't want to. Not get even in, just Marvel. Yeah, movies. I don't want to get into the subject of it. It's just you know, it sucks. Yeah, I just hate hearing about it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get on Twitter a lot, and I still see comments being mentioned about it. I'm like, really? I don't want to. I don't want to feel depressed <laughs> even yeah. more. You know, me as a moviegoer and also loving Guardians of the Galaxy, um, it's it just sucks. Yeah, you know. I'm glad that, you know, we got at least the two. So if three ends up bombing, I think they can yeah. still get together. I mean, the story, I, they still have that storyline in the script. It's just trying to develop it into, you know, yeah. to a film, it's going to be kind of hard. Like Yeah, the vision that mm-hmm. this individual had. Yeah. Um, and uh, apparently it was a joke that he made, but very distasteful. Yeah. And... Um, Someone, just, someone just took it the wrong sh- way. Just goes to show, man, like comedy is very, it's a very complicated art form. Very. Like some people that are great at it or were great at it can take a turn for the worse with one joke. Right. And they become blacklisted. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So look look at Kathy Griffin, you know? She oh, was, yeah. I forgot about was, that one. She was pretty re- relevant throughout most of her career. And then she went and did that, was it a year ago? And I think it was two years ago, was it not? Time, time flies. Yeah, it might have been two years ago, but at least a year, year and a half ago, maybe two, yeah, two years ago. And um, yeah, you don't hear about her no more. She got blacklisted real bad, like blackballed. Yeah. And it's like, huh, nice knowing you. So it's, it's crazy, man. But uh, you just got to think before you speak, I guess. That's the best, that's an old term, but... It's kind of strange saying that because at the same time, we're supposed to have freedom. We're supposed to have that freedom of speech. It's like I always hear that, that little saying, think with your mind, not with your mouth. Mm-hmm. I hear that all the time. The, the, the world, the U.S. in particular, is one of the most sensitive places right now. Yeah. So you can't, unfortunately, say what you want. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's Words are very powerful mm-hmm. these days. And um, they've always been powerful. I mean, you can really psychologically mess somebody up Mm -hmm. by just saying certain things. And, you know, I've seen people where they're told they're fat or they're told they're ugly or they're told they're dumb their whole life. And it might've just been sort of like an in passing thing where they're not being yelled at that they're fat and ugly, but they're being told that. Yeah. And that still sticks. It doesn't have to be something that's 
you know, thrown at you like military drill sergeant style. It can just be something that you're just saying, like we're talking mm-hmm. like now yeah. and someone calls you something and that just sticks in your head and you can't forget about it. Right. And you just tell yourself, this is what people think about me. And the next thing you know, you're messed up. Yeah. So it's, it makes sense uh, <laughs> as to why um, he was let go. I completely agree it, it needed to happen, but um, it's just unfortunate that he did what he did because um, those, like I said, those are two of my favorite films, and he All was, right. a, you know, a major part in making them happen. But um, I think we can, we'll be fine. Um, they'll find someone else, and uh, we'll keep on trucking. They got, like you said, they got the script. They got, this, you know, what what's supposed to happen, and uh, music is a big part of those movies of why they're so fantastic. Um, I'm not sure how much he had to do with the music being selected, but um, I think all the other elements are still going to be there for sure. So yeah. movie will still be fine. I think you made a good point there. Um, from there, I want to move into something more positive. Uh, Patrick Stewart and the fact that uh, he's reprising his role as Captain Picard mm-hmm. on Star Trek. Yep. So Jay bat <laughs> He's he's a witness to me. So like me <laughs> and Star Trek have had a very funny relationship my whole life. Um, I'm not even gonna lie. For most of my life, I was not down with the with the Trekkies. I was a huge Star Wars fan, and I'm not afraid to say that. And um, <laughs> with all that said, I uh, I didn't want anything to do with Star Trek. I thought it was cheesy. I thought it was lame. And I'm just like, man, like, what is this like? It's a TV show. Movies are better. You know, like I was just on that tr- that train growing up. And, um, you know, don't blame don't blame me for all of it. It, it. All my all the people that influenced me uh, getting into Star Wars were also not in Star Trek. So it, it just made me feel like I shouldn't even waste my time. Mm-hmm. Um, the game I play called Hero Clicks has gotten me into a few things or made me look into a few <laughs> things. Star Trek was one of them. I'm not going to lie. I, a freaking game. Top, tabletop game made me think twice about something that I've, you know, kind of shunned my whole life. I looked into Star Trek. I ended up loving it. It's very entertaining. I'm very into old nostalgic stuff, hence the name of the team, hence the podcast, hence, yep. you know, what me and j got going on. And um, never looked back. I mean, the original um, is what I've watched the most of, but, you know, Next Generation and things like that, I've also looked into that. And I've always known... Patrick Stewart, obviously he's Professor Xavier. He's he's done a lot of other roles too, mm-hmm. but um, I, I've also I've always you know known him. I did watch a few episodes um, of you know his version of Star Trek that he was on, and I, I was always impressed. I always thought he did a, such a great job. He's so professional. Like you can tell, like this man uh, studied to be an actor. Like he. He's got class, you know what I'm saying? He does it so well. It just seems like every move this guy makes, like, flawless. Um, I know what the I know what it is. <laughs> it's the bald head. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like nothing's out of place. Like, the man nope. just looks like, boom. Exactly. That's probably what it is, man, to be honest. But, um... <laughs> But he just does just a fantastic to train job. Just off. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he just does a fantastic job. So with him coming back, I'm like, man, that's huge. Like, also that I'm I'm on the Star Trek uh, hype train. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have so much. The greatest thing about jumping on this hype train at damn near 30 years old, it was 29 officially. But um, <laughs> I have so much content. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you do. So I can't sit down one day and be like, "Mm, there's nothing for me to watch. Like, I have tons of stuff I can watch. You know, I got Star Trek on top of everything else that I got Mm -hmm. going on. So I'm in good shape and I'm excited because, like I said, the original series, fantastic. And with Captain Kirk and everything, which they're also doing something where he's back. Yeah. I think not William Shatner, but I think I'm going to put that kind of like tied into it or something like that. I think. I don't know because they it's a great time to be well they did a that Trekkie. they did that in the movie <laughs> yeah. and it did very well. Yeah, it's it's a great time though. I'm I'm super into everything they got going on. I think from a financial standpoint, it's it's the best time to be into this. 
and also from a Star Wars standpoint. So both of my little space loves, you know, it's great. The animated, the Clone Wars is coming back. They announced that. We didn't talk about that last episode, but the Clone Wars is coming oh, back. Oh, yeah. And I, I love that because the the further the show went on, it started focusing more on the clone troopers mm-hmm. and um, how Fives, basically, there was something wrong with him. Um, he basically, um, the whole chip, whatever, that made Order 66 go about, his malfunctioned. So he was trying to kill Jedi before Order 66 was declared, which obviously is fucked up. Mm. <laughs> so it ended up becoming one of the best storylines. Mm. And it may not be Fives. I can't remember the name now because it's been a few years, but I believe it was Fives. But anyway, his chip malfunction, he ends up trying to kill Jedis because that's what Order 66 was about. We saw that in, you know, Revenge of the Sith. And um, he gets taken down. Um, but you get that opens up the whole can of worms of what what is going on? Why did he try to kill Jedi? So mm-hmm. they're starting to find that out. And the uh, story picks up right where the last season ended. And they had like some lost episodes, lost missions. So those are some of the best episodes, some of the best animated Star Wars you'll ever see. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. I want to say some of it is on Netflix, uh, most of it. I think majority of it's on Netflix. Yeah. So if you have Netflix, if you don't, they do a free month, check it out. And, Splurge uh, it on that month and cut it. <laughs> you, won't, you won't regret it. It's a really good show. But and it's coming back. They announced it at uh, was it Comic Con? Yeah, yeah. So I'm super hype about that. What are your thoughts on that, J-Bet? I'll be honest. I haven't even watched the Clone Wars. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even. Wa- well, the thing is, I haven't even watched it because I was. <laughs> I just died a little inside. Thanks. Okay? Oh, shut up. I just died a little. Bit. Shut up. I just died in. No, I didn't. No. Yeah. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> but uh, I was more focused on comic books, man. That time when that, you know, cart animation came out. <laughs> um, because hearing about the whole new Marvel Cinematic Universe and you got DC coming out with live action movies. You're like, mm-hmm. I'm like, Ooh. it's It's fine, J-Bat. We're going to get you on Clone Wars. You don't got to think of some excuse. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get you on it, just you, like you did with Game of Thrones. The Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, Game of Thrones, you only saw one episode with Two. me, but they are hour long episodes. Yes, so, they are. So you know, if you if you even watch an hour of this, I think you'll be like Psh, knocking these out, and they're on Netflix, so you can watch like them on your with own Stranger time. Things? Well, Stranger Things, you're a bigger fan than me now. <laughs> got like got like eleven underwear and stuff like that. Mm, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, this is episode 11. So, hey, we, yeah, we at yeah, least dude. did one 11 drop on this. How did Hell we yeah. not do that? Dang it. So, we did it. 11. <laughs> one of the dopest characters on TV right now. Yeah. Which, and, you, which well, she's on the new Godzilla coming out. Oh, my out. gosh, yes. And what else did you mention she's going to she be? She is on? casted as Sherlock Holmes's sister. That's awesome. On the Holmes TV show on BBC. That's awesome. And I'm a huge fan of that show. Not just because of Benedict Cumberbatch and also um, the whole storyline of that. Okay. I just love it. Once when I heard she got casted as that, I was like, okay, that's even more awesome. <laughs> you know. Are we seeing are we seeing spinoff? Is she a detective as well? Or No. No? Okay. I was just making sure. <laughs> well, you haven't seen that? You haven't seen that show? I've seen Sherlock. I just haven't seen um I haven't seen that she was casted as a sister. No. Have you seen last the season? No, I'm behind on that show. I'm not I'm not afraid to say I've at least seen the show unlike someone who hasn't even watched Clone Wars. <laughs> well, I mean I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> There's nothing to say other than you go watch Clone Wars. <laughs> but but uh, we we got you, dog. <laughs> what was the thing we found out earlier you hadn't seen? Not the Studio Ghibli, because you technically have seen that. I have seen that. There was something else, though, that like we were sitting across from each other, and I was like, what the heck? La, 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 la. I don't know. Dang it. I right. don't know. There's something else, though, and I was just like, what? But we'll, we'll move on. Um, you just made me get like the biggest brain fart ever. <laughs> Uh, Terminator 6, talk about that, J-Bet. Oh, dude. Because you were the one that brought that news Terminator to me. 6, if you are a big fan of 
Terminator 2. T2. My favorite one. Yeah, it's like everybody's super, favorite. Super epic. You yes. know? I just found out Sarah Connor's coming back on Terminator 6. Yes. The original from T2. Oh, yes. So if you look around, you see pictures of her with two other women. You don't know who the two women are, but you do recognize Sarah Connor. And then I found out Arnold Schwarzenegger is actually filming Terminator 6. So you know those two are going to be pretty epic right there. If you're a big Terminator fan, I highly recommend probably try to hit up, trying to hit rumors or something like that. But me, I don't like doing that because I'm not that type of person. Because I want to see how the movie trailer is going to be about. But when I heard about the original actress that's played Sarah Connor on T6, I got a nerdgasm right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. For all the gamers out there, um, I don't know if they just kind of dropped that one. But, um, I, I mean, I'm super hype about, about the new Terminator. I'm uh, also hype that uh, the next Creed is coming out. You know? Assassin's Creed? No, no, no. Part two of Creed with uh, Michael B. Jordan, the boxing movie. Oh, yeah. It's basically like the next Rocky. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, they're going to have, um, what's his name on it? His son fighting Creed. Basically, uh, the man who killed his father on Rocky three, was it? Or four? Um, he's coming back. So, Really? Yeah. They're doing that that Russian wow. versus American again. Oh, it's kind of like uh, Dolph Lundgren's character, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. That's gonna be. Lit. I didn't even know about that. I mean, with all the all the money now, the first movie did really well. Yeah. So, and Michael B. Jordan's like one of the most popular actors right now. Killmonger. So, I'm excited. Super excited. So. um... Speaking of uh, nerdy stuff, before we go into this next topic, um, if you live in the North Alabama area, you should have a mall that has Azumis in it. And uh, <laughs> me and J-Bat are both very big into Dragon Ball Z. Um, one of my favorite skateboard companies owned by a gentleman named Paul Rodriguez out of Cali, one of the top skateboarders in the world whose father is coincidentally a stand-up comedian, who's mm-hmm. also very popular. He's been in movies and everything. His name's Paul Rodriguez as well. <laughs> anyway, he is a big anime fan and a big fan of Dragon Ball Z. So he actually did a collaboration of his skateboard company, who also has a clothing and Dragon Ball Z, and Zoomies online, so zoomies.com, and in-store, um, is carrying the clothing. I've bought a few items already. Top of the clothing, they are a skateboard company too, so they have made Dragon Ball Z skateboards. If you're looking for something dope to put on your wall on display and you're a big anime fan, some skateboard decks are a good way to kind of, you know, advertise your, you know, your fanhood, I guess. And um, they they look dope. I mean, I think they're they're an alternative to just putting a poster up. Looks way cooler, in my opinion. And they run around. The shirts are pretty cool. They run around 50 bucks i think per skate deck regular price but they have everything from button-ups long sleeve shirts short sleeve shirts hoodies hats stickers uh throw pillows they got the full lot like full list of things Uh, but check it out zoomies.com that's z-u-m-i-e-z.com and it's primitive skateboards so i i think it's super awesome it's nice they even got a skateboard that's all the Dragon Balls. So the skate deck is shaped like Dragon Balls. Hmm. I was like, that would look so dope as a wall, uh, you know, decoration. I don't know about riding that skateboard. <laughs> yeah. But it does look cool. So I thought that was pretty awesome. All right. Next subject we're going to move into. We're going to be little fat boys on this next part of the podcast. The husky part. The husky. we got to keep it. Husky for our husky boys. Ooh, husky. So um, obviously, me and J Bat huge into Disney. Um, J Bat fanboy is a little too hard. You know, he dresses like a Disney princess sometimes. Shut up. <laughs> All right, I, I'm sorry. How do you tell Your me to T-shirt says you? Disney princess on the tag, so shut up. You bought it for me. <laughs> Did it as a joke, you fool. <laughs> well, I like it. It's Aladdin. It's like yeah. my favorite. So, and you're wearing it right now. Uh, 
I am not. Nah, uh-huh. I hope it fits me, though. People don't see it. I hope it's like, I know. So, j bought me two shirts. No, a, my parents bought you one. I bought oh, okay. Deadpool shirt and a Disney shirt. The Disney shirt, my favorite Disney movie is Aladdin. So, kudos to j for remembering that. And His favorite me. Princess is Jasmine. <laughs> and, uh, because she's hot. But, um, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, shirt's got a nice color too. It's like a mint color kind of, yeah. and it's got um, them riding the magic carpet and, and whatnot from the scene from the movie. It's a whole new world, and it's my size. It looks like it's my size, but then um, where the tag is, it's one of those cool tags where it's not actually a tag. It's just printed on the shirt, and it says Disney Princess. I was like, Jay Matt got me a Disney Princess shirt, <laughs> so. As long as it's large in men's and not large in women's, I should be straight. It I looks got it like from the so, men's side. But it's part of the Disney Princess yeah. collection. Like, <laughs> these a-holes. <laughs> like, they could have just put Disney on it. But um, yeah, you'll probably see me rocking that on Instagram one of these days. I'll make sure to take a, a picture. Shout out J-Bat for the <laughs> Disney Princess <laughs> collection. Shit. But going back to, you know, uh, Team Husky hashtag uh, Guy Fieri. Just announced he's opening a chicken restaurant at Disney World. What? Yes. And it looks good. When I first saw a picture of it, I thought it was Chick-fil-A because it uses the red and white coloring. But there's a snapshot, j Bat. Woo-oo. So it looks like a nice little fast food. Sounds like we need to do a road trip down there. Oh, my God. Um, and I think it's going to be called Chicken Guy. I think that's what the restaurant's going to be called. I like it. Chicken Guy. I like it. Um, yeah. It's going to have those, you know, chicken uh, or Chick-fil-A style menu, chicken sandwiches, fries. You know, it's going to be kind of fast food there. But um, apparently he's a big sauce guy, uh, Guy Fieri. And he's going to offer 20 different sauces for your dipping pleasure. It says. Oh, my gosh. And I love sauces. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. I'm reading this. Someone this is live reaction, guys. Some. This is live reactions, guys. 20 sauces? I mean, I'm sure I'll love at least 10. Like, come on. Shut up. You'll love all 20. Oh, my God. This is amazing. The fries look really good, too. And I'm not even a fry person. Like, I don't eat fries for real. But chicken guy. You know, you need a little quick service menu or quick serve option. Because when you, if you do the dining plan at Disney, look at us going into dining tips and (laughs) Disney trip tips. (laughs) I've gone to Disney twice in the past three years. I did the dining plan twice. We did the largest dining plan the first time. That was overkill. Unless you're a rather super husky person that loves eating three course meals. I'm raising my hand right now. At least twice a day. (laughs) (laughs) I'm raising my hand right now. I'm raising my hand. (laughs) If you love eating three course meals at least twice a day, the deluxe dining plan is the one for you. Uh, but I really think it's overkill for anybody. And then you get snack credits and all this stuff. Um, you also get one quick service dining on that plan. And the quick service dining are like those, you know, you go and grab something. They may not even have a place to sit. They're not like legit sit down restaurants all the right. time. Starbucks, that's a quick serve. You can just get in line. I want to get this croissant and a coffee. Boom. There's your quick service. Um, chicken guy looks like it's going to be a quick service. So okay. I can see it. Too. That's perfect. Cause yeah. I mean, I just want to go in, get 17 sauces, please. I know <laughs> <laughs> that's not really what I'm going to do. Oh, no, but, I uh, can see in your hotel room, you're going to have like all the sauces <laughs> laid out on your table and, and like, then, okay, and I'm going to throw my ray chicken in this one, throw my Ray-Bans on and throw an Instagram hashtag mm. sauce boss picture. <laughs> I'll be in the background shaking my head when you have all those stupid sauces right there. <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. And I love chicken. You know, it's... Who doesn't you know, Who doesn't love chicken? It's the reason I got out of the whole vegan thing. I did a ve- the vegan thing for a month. And I was like, I can't give up on chicken. I just can't. I'm sorry. So then chicken was like my gateway drug back into <laughs> eating meat. <laughs> yeah. I like how you said your gateway drug back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It just, I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're vegan and you're listening to this, but I, I just couldn't say no to chicken. I mean, and apparently neither can Guy Fieri. I mean, so 
I'm excited about that. And it says it's going to be opening in Disney Springs this summer next to Planet Hollywood. Ooh. So it may already be open, but this is, looks pretty new. This was actually July 29th. So sometime this month, it'll be opening. So yeah, maybe we do need to plan a trip, bro. Yep. <laughs> maybe we do. I don't mind. Here's the thing. I don't mind not going to, well, yeah. Well, no. Yeah. What? What are you <laughs> saying, dude? Make up your mind. <laughs> if we do go down there, we have to go to Hollywood Studios. Oh yeah, that's that's. Well, I mean, this is this is not even in Disney oh, Springs, know. so we can just go to Disney Springs. But if we go to Disney Springs, and watch an Orlando Magic game or something. Ooh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not too far; it's right there. Because when we went, when uh, me and you know the girlfriend went to watch Royal Rumble, that yeah. was there. It was at the Amway Center that's mm-hmm. down there. Um, that was at the Amway Center, and we hit up Disney Springs. And we had fun because Disney Springs is so good now that you do feel like you're getting a Disney experience yeah. going in. You don't get the rides, but there are a few things you can do that are interactive. Like they have a Star Wars VR thing going on that my buddy did. He said it was awesome. Um, they also have the little, um, what you call it, hot air balloon that you can ride if the weather's right. Mm. Um, there's, I think, a boat ride you can do. So there's a few things, you know, it's not Disney per se. But you can get Disney type food, and there are a few, like I said, fun things you can do. Yeah, and you can buy Disney memorabilia because the Disney, the big, big Disney store is. Oh there. yeah, the World of Disney. Yeah, which so, they redid the outside of it. So yeah, so short of I guess seeing some of the characters, you can still get you know some of the experience. But the Tower of Terror, though, man, I love <laughs> right. That ride. right? I mean, you know, if we go. And we plan on staying, I think, at least two days. Then I'd be down to do that. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to just go for one day, try to squeeze Disney and Disney Springs and watch an Orlando Magic game <clears> and <throat> just drive back the next day. Well, That'd I mean, be we go down there. Or same day. That we go suck. down there, get a hotel room, Disney Springs, Magic game. Next day, we go to Hollywood Studios. And then the next day, we go to Hollywood Studios. What? And then we just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> That's that sounds like just a regular trip, sir. <laughs> I just I, I, the thing when I first went to Disney with my family, yeah, we made those memories. It was awesome memories, but just to see the experience of how <clears throat> not only myself but my kids when they see their face of seeing yeah. you know Mickey. Donald, Goofy, Daisy. Um, it's awesome. All the characters, and they're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They're freaking out, and I love seeing that. And then all of a sudden, I see other kids doing that, too, and I'm like, this is really, really magical. I love it. So, On the, on the subject of um, Husky and restaurants, <laughs> I asked J-Bat a question, and I want to ask the public this too, but I'm also asking J Bat on air <laughs> and I'll follow it with my, my choice. So I, uh, I don't know why, <laughs> cause we weren't on air when I asked him. Nope. It just being a Husky question, I guess. <laughs> but I was like, well, we love food. I so. was like, J Bat, which one of these fries <laughs> would you choose? <laughs> if you could only choose one curly fries from Arby's waffle fries from Chick-fil-A or McDonald's fries with just a pinch of salt. Because I, I think they need just a little salt. Just a little bit. Not much. Like a little pinch. Which one of those? If you had to choose one. And J-Bat, what would you go with and why? Waffle fries from Chick-fil-A. If you got the mayonnaise and the Texas pizza sauce Ooh-wee. mixed in together. <laughs> oof. You got, that, you got that good kick. I don't do that mix. But that when he mentioned that, I was like, that does sound or good. Or you could do the Chick Fil A sauce too. They as have well. they have a, like twenty sauces. Polynesian real talk. sauce, ranch sauce. They got this um, sriracha sauce mm-hmm. now. It's got like sriracha and something else. But they got tons of sauces, and um, yeah, they, those waffle fries are bomb. Yep. I also introduced to some extent. He hasn't had them yet. Um, if if he had had these, he might be Team Husky for real because. You, you might end up going to Arby's on a regular basis. But Arby's started making loaded fries. I don't know if yeah, that's officially what that. they call them. <laughs> I don't know if that's officially what they call them. Just put those like gourmet fries because that's what. Prepped. Yeah. Yeah. If you've ever had Charlie's um, at a mall or something near you. But um, you basically get 
Arby's curly fries, which are already great, and then you put cheese, another type of cheese. So you got two cheeses at least. There might be three cheeses on there, but two types of cheese, ranch, and bacon. And they don't, they're not modest on the bacon. Like they put a good amount of bacon on there. And it's not like fake bacon bit type thing. It's legit bacon <laughs> that they've cut up into pieces and then you get it in there. <sighs> yes. I just turned into an obese man. And who's, who's Team Husky here? <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's so good. Like it's, it's so good, dude. And they, they don't give you them. Um, in like a little fried thing. They put them in like their own little container. Like it's a dessert or something. What? It's like, here you go. Here's your fries. And I love the red ranch is what they call it apparently from there. But it's like a sweet sauce that they put a bit on the beef and cheddar. If you ever had a beef and cheddar from Arby's. Oh yeah. I love the beef and cheddar. They put this red sauce on it. Most people don't even know it's on there, but you can get it separately and it's called red ranch and it's amazing. And if you get some of that with the fries, it's all she wrote. I, I won't be hearing from you for a while. <laughs> I'm just saying it's so good that you can be like, I got hmm, 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 from my significant other on this hand and some of these fries on this hand. And you're literally going to look at your significant other like, mm, this is a hard choice. Um, um, honey, I'm going to go for these gourmet Don't fries judge right me, now. okay? Don't judge me. Next time I'll give you some. <laughs> I mean, of the fries. <laughs> I was going to share. I was going to share. But you can lick the bowl if you want. But for me... <laughs> Since I didn't say those fries, the ones with the bacon and stuff, um, I would probably have to go waffle fries as well. They're they're super delicious. Like the first time you have them, you're like, why are they shaped like this? And then you put one in your mouth and you're just like, wow. Not, why doesn't everybody make waffle they're fries? They're not delicious. They're delicious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's actually a guy that made a song about them on YouTube recently. And it's pretty funny. Like he didn't write about... Chick-fil-A sandwiches, which are also fantastic, going back to the whole love of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote about the fries, the waffle fries. Oh, my God. He went to Chick-fil-A and just ordered fries. That's how much he loves the fries. Oh, jeez. I actually sent you a clip of it. You did? Yeah. I don't know if you ever watched it. Oh, I did. <laughs> I did. But, uh, yeah, super awesome. Uh, maybe I'll tag it on the... Twitter or something, so everyone else can get a kick out. Heck yeah, I would shoot. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that guys, I think that wraps up this episode, episode eleven. It's been a lot of fun. Um, this, of course, will be dropping on Monday, and uh, episode twelve. Um, we got a lot of big plans. We got um, we're starting to get things for that. Um, if you have any topics you uh, like us to talk about, um, you know, obviously in our little circle of of things we normally hit on. Uh, Geek culture, comics, tech. I think that's something we're going to start talking a little bit more about. There's supposed to be a new iPhone around the corner. Yep. iPhone X Plus is the rumor. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. what they're going to call it. I have an, uh, an X now, and I'm thinking about going back up. I've had a Plus when they first dropped. It's not called X. It's called 10. I know. The 10 Plus. Okay. Get it right. I'm sorry. Okay. You Jeez. Know, we, we love X's. Obviously, our team name even has one in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm thinking about going back up to a plus model. He wants plus to go model. <laughs> a plus model. He wants to go bigger. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I have this dope Iron Man case on my phone that wait, I, wait, 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 wait. made. Who, who who showed you the Iron Man case? I don't know. Me? <laughs> this one glows in the dark and everything. Yes, I showed you that you know, on the website. Funny, funny story about this. I don't Iron Man I like, but he's not my favorite by any means. Um, but because this one had glow in the dark features, I was like, boom, easy. <laughs> there was a Black Panther case that I much rather would have had. Mm -hmm. But it didn't glow in the dark. I'm like, how are you not going to have you know, Black Panther eyes at least or something like the case was just asking for glow in the dark so that's it would have been I'm cool like, if they had the black like the the outlining yes have it just purple like, glow in the dark purple's time exactly like his suit it was mm. a missed opportunity by otterbox so mm. they continue to let me down but i i like 
I like the case. I still like it. Um, but Iron Man just never been my favorite. Like I love them. Don't get me wrong, but like you connect to certain characters, mm-hmm. and Spider Man's still like my favorite. And um, it's like I like gadgets, and Batman has gadgets. So right. I mean, right. I mean, put one on one together. Obviously, sorry, your DC boys ain't got this outer box, uh, you know, collaboration. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> who who do y'all have case collaborations with? Nobody. That that was the gas station. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Texaco, hey guys, check out the, check out the case. It keeps falling off because it doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> like those little cheat cases that like sandwich your phone and then have little locking places around. Oh my gosh! And then you drop are... your phone one time and then it never connects it's, the same again. It's over. Yeah, it's terrible. But um. <laughs> but yeah guys uh, thanks for spending some time with us this week we and love as always you. new episodes every Monday like and subscribe and follow us on our Instagram or Twitter you can still show us some love on our Patreon donations start as little as a dollar patreon.com slash nostalgia x podcast or nsx podcast patreon.com slash nsx podcast alright we're out peace